And then at some point, my whole belly ached. And yeah, yeah. It yeah. was just, I just had so much food. And then actually, um, at night, so I have a stoma, and at night, the uh, I woke up, it was like bursting full, you know. So that wasn't, you know, I, I just, you know, after that, I was like, okay, I told Delisha, uh, please help me not monitor <laughs> my food intake because uh, as much as I enjoyed the intake, it was uh, just too much. You know? I wish I had someone like that. I was stuffing myself here recently, <laughs> emotional stress and life, life things going on. Like, yeah. Returning back to gluten and get this clog in me and it won't come out either way. You know? uh, anyway, uh, yeah, it'll get you. It does. When you, I mean, don't, when you don't have that old fashioned full feeling, like I reverted back all the way years ago to where, oh, I'm finally at that old full feeling again. Like I've finally come full circle. Yeah. Back to it. And that kicked in again. So um, after I, so the, so my, my trip, I had to cut it short because what happened was, so Delisha left uh, after six weeks and then I was staying with some friends in, in uh, near the Swiss border and they have a beautiful forest right behind their place. So I ended up hiking there. And I would hike up for about, you know, an hour. And it was like pretty much steady uphill. And then I would run back down. And then i do that. And then at the second or third day, I started having back pains. And I was like, oh, dude, did I overdo it? You know, mm-hmm. I thought it was like mechanical. So I kind of took it a little slow, but it never went away. And it kind of got slightly worse. I, I wouldn't say every day, but, you know, it definitely kind of started getting worse. And I was having a hard time um uh, starting to have a hard time sleeping and sitting. Um, and then at some point I was like, yeah, this is, something's wrong. So I ended up going to a doctor there, but they couldn't find anything. I uh, did an ultrasound and wasn't anything. First I thought I had a, you know, uh, restricted colon or something like that, but that wasn't it. Um, and then the uh, doctor said, well, like this was Saturday. So they said, well, we can keep you in the hospital on Monday. We can sort of have more tests with my team of doctors here. And I said, well, rather than spending two days in the hospital in Germany, let me just mm. go back home and uh, uh, early. So that's what I ended up doing. So I cut my trip short. I had to go for another week because I had a business trip to Berlin where my manager was actually meeting me there. And I couldn't cancel a hotel and it was you know, a reasonable amount of money. So I said, well, let me do that and get a couple more friends in. And then I have a cousin in Berlin and a former colleague. So did that and then um, went to London for two days and then flew back from there. And that was getting a little hard. Um, the, uh, like the, the flight home, I was lucky because I had a lay flat bed. So most of the, mm. the, uh, the, the, the flight, I was able to be flat, but like having to sit for the landing was actually just sitting up little, little. Your lower back, you said? Or? It was actually more uh, right where you sit, you know, your <laughs> the butt, the, uh, the middle butt bone. What's that? <laughs> uh, actually, not the bone, but literally oh. the the uh, the, oh. the large intestine. You know, so oh. like when I sat on that, it was oh. like there was like some after a couple of minutes, the, some nerve would shoot up nice pain uh, right up my spine. So I, you know, and then so I got home. Uh, and then, you have you have a piece of your colon removed, right? Or, or... well, most of it is removed. Oh, so sorry. I have the the end is still there. Um, so I was like, oh, what is this? And so when, we, when I got back here, I did some tests and then it ended up unfortunately being a, uh, like a soft tissue tumor that was in the lower uh, lumbar region. So right by the sacrum basically. Um, and then, so that was like, okay, that could explain some of this. Yeah. Um, and then the nice thing is nowadays they have, uh, they have things to, um, you know, it's almost like Star Trek-y type um, um, things and it's what's called cyber knife. And what hmm. it is is actually, um, it's a, it's using radiation, but very targeted. So what it is, it's a, it's a machine that kind of, you get, you're on a table and the machine kind of goes around you. And what it does, it has a stereoscopic um, ray of, basically it shoots protons, just a single protons. And where the, where they meet is, that's the only place where it's going to actually hmm. destroy tissue. And so they can be very specific about, okay, here, you know, it's like, they can see it, you know, tumors, like whatever dime size and then they program the machine so that it actually exactly targets that and it's so exacting that it actually no it actually uh, uh, monitors your breathing so it actually moves with your breathing oh. so if, if if the tumor is in a spot like for example if it's further up your like uh in your liver or something like that of course it'll move with your breathing in my case because of in a spine it wasn't going to move much but but even if i shifted my own movement the machine kind of adjusted you know to that so, and it was like, the less I moved, the faster it would go. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so yeah, so I had that, and then an MRI showed that I had another tumor actually that was in the bone a little further up. Uh, so, but it was, the good thing about that one was extremely early detection, so it was like barely, barely there. So that I did that treatment, um, and about two weeks, and, and I was starting to have pain, uh, enough pain to actually take uh, pain medication, which I generally don't like to take, but it was, I just couldn't function. Yeah, I, yeah, there was like two positions that I could stay in, and that was like on my right side and my left side, laying down, that was it. I mean, standing wasn't really comfortable, uh, sitting was not comfortable at all. Uh, laying on my stomach could, wasn't working, laying my back wasn't. This, so this was in August? This was August, and then I went all the way to, I mean, only this week is when I have been able to start sitting wow. there. So it's been, it's been a journey. So it's, uh, it's not been fun. But what do you think about, well, you, just, you had the radiation therapy, and the, 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 I mean, though we don't feel like we need to eat, one of the goals, we use, use that, you know, less eating as a goal to try to be healthier, that was, yeah, <laughs> that was the, that was the, that's the, the hope, that's the and hope. that's what a lot of people have seen, curing cancer, and right. heart disease, diabetes, yeah, um, anything, like I've, you know, I cure common colds all the time, I just, getting up, not eating, drinking water, and it goes away, right, where I could feel that it would have been like a more serious uh, sickness if I would have started eating and dehydrating myself again. Right, right. But, uh, so how do you, what do you explain is going on there? Did you overdo eating in, in Europe or? Um, no, because is, um, things kind of, uh, I mean, there, there's a certain uh, protein that can be measured in the blood that shows the activity and that was steadily increasing even before going to Europe. Uh, so protein, what protein? Uh, it's called CEA, I don't know exactly. It's basically the um, certain cancer cells, this includes colon cancer cells, hmm. uh, create this protein and then when it's enough of it, it can be measured in the bloodstream. So, and then that's usually a pretty decent sign that there is more activity and, uh, uh, but it wouldn't necessarily show up until it's- I don't know these, specifics but i would have plenty to hypothesize and argue about <laughs> um if the doctors know 100 percent what that means what does more protein in the blood mean does that mean no, this specific more, protein. more more of uh yeah more of this specific protein does that mean that you have more cancer yes vulnerability in your body or does that does no. that mean your body's like breaking down cancer better and putting it in your blood so it can get rid of it who knows like no it's actually the opposite speculate. it's actually it really only shows up when it's spread the science is always changing <laughs> okay uh, so they're showing up when it's spreading yeah, so it's basically once it's actually entered your bloodstream and it's going to other organs, that's when this protein can be measured. So it's as if your body's overwhelmed and exactly. So it's it's past the point. I mean, it's it's really not a it's not an early detection thing, but it's it's a measure that when you do have stage four uh, colon cancer, meaning that it's spread to the other organs, then that's a reasonable good um, measure to see where things are at. You know that are you is is there higher activity or is it is it uh, being contained? What year were so, you diagnosed? Uh, I was diagnosed six years ago, and then that was stage zero, and then uh, a year ago I was stage four. So, okay. and I tried all I tried different alternative healing methods in those five years, and ultimately they didn't work. What's so? I want to be. Uh, I mean, some of them work to. Can I ask of, a tough question? Sure. What's what's the average? Um, what's the life? What's the survival of stage four cancer? What's the you know? The well, life, yeah, the I mean, it, the, the term, the survival, three to five years, but that's basically seventy to eighty year olds. There's no statistics okay. on the healthy forty nine year old. So that, yeah. that's why these statistics so don't get, really. You get plenty of time. Yeah, uh, and and I don't buy into these statistics because, mm -hmm. um, again, they are very specific. I mean, because most people that have stage four colon cancer are 70 and 80 years old um, and not in great health. Um, I mean, I consider myself in decent health and yeah. I know how to take care of myself and to uh, live healthy, healthily, even though the nutrition really didn't change much, to be honest, oddly enough, uh, you know, at least not over the five years. You know, it's like, and, and I think that's, that's the thing not everything works for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. And and there's things that, yes, you can be healthier through nutrition or fasting and those things. And um, I totally I totally think that is valid, you know? Um, and then there's other people that, you know, I think that's part of it, but where you see people that eat health, that eat unhealthy all their life, and they're the healthiest people in the world. 
Well, because I think they actually live mostly in prana, and what they eat doesn't really sustain them, hmm. right? So whatever they eat doesn't really affect their body. So they, they have a very high functioning pranic intake, which is what sustains them, and then whatever they eat doesn't really get in their system. Just that's kind of just passing through. That's exactly. I have an interesting thought. Like, um, what do you do? You think there's any kind of pranic energy or uh, channels that you get passed down from your parents? Like, if they have ability to absorb more prana, do you have it? Because I, I would think so. I call it a genetic credit. Like, you're, if your parents are healthy, then you're healthier. You have a better chance to stuff yourself with junk food and live longer. If your genes were healthy when you were born, maybe it's related to prana, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, oddly enough, I mean, that's the thing about you know, in the the. Uh, uh, I go back to my my parents and their friends, and then um, you know, obviously, I know a lot of their kids, and and even my my uh, my cousins that are also one generation um, uh, past the, uh, the 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 war generation that grew up in the war, and we kids are all unhealthier than our parents. All I mean, yeah. almost throughout the bank, it, it's it's th there is there's almost very few families that that you know I visited in Europe where the kids are healthier than the parents, and that's a really interesting. So so that would not you know that's the thing is like oh great healthy parents and then the kids are unhealthy. So that, the more you know, the kids are exposed to the modern. Sure, there and, and you have to look at the multitude of things, but that would go against the genetic predisposition of being healthy, right? That it well, you could have compare them to like um, American kids or whatever. Or people that didn't have experiences their parents had. Sure, that's true. That would be that would be an interesting uh, scenario. But it was really it was it was quite it was just very very uh, stunning. And everywhere I went, I was like I, I looked at that because it was very curious, and it was almost hundred percent that all the kids were unhealthier than our parents, you know. And and so we were just kind of I, to me that was like a flabbergasting. Uh, There's more junk food out there. There's more processed. It's more well, creating more stuff from factory than from nature. Not and more, that. more of it. Yeah, but I'll, yeah, I think less, there's... Less exercise, less natural lifestyle. Absolutely. You know, there, there's a lot of things. More I think, stress. Uh, well, gestation, you know, gestation periods, uh, birth. I mean, that has huge impacts on your life. And I think our parents had a much more natural way, even though they might have been born pre-war or during the war. So that was a stressful time, but... There was no like, oh, your baby's going to be born on this day, and if not, we're going to induce. So there's no right. scheduling. Um, most of them weren't born in the hospital. Um, so there's there's a much more natural way of actual of this period where there wasn't this you know box to put you in. You know? And then you're right. After that, it's like okay, there was no formula. You know, there was no there was a natural like, yeah, you're going to get sustained with mother's milk, and um, that's the only thing that exists. You know, and then Home cooked meals, that's the only thing that exists too. Granted, during that time there was even less, you know, because they were all going yeah. growing up during the war. So very interesting. I mean, just just mm. certainly and then of course less exposure to pesticides and herbicides and, and pollution. So and different stress. You know, so I, I mean the same the, there's also a thing about um, Akashic records where, and I just recently found that out, where you get passed on some of the trauma from your Previous generations, but I took on all my mom's trauma. You get the trauma, but you don't oh. get the tools to deal with them. Hmm. So that's the problem. So until so I have the trauma of my grandparents and my parents growing hmm. up in the war, mm -hmm. but I didn't get the tools to deal with it. Right. So now I have to basically, and then I just recently kind of somebody made me aware of that, and I was like, hmm. "Wow, that's interesting." So well, let me then just disconnect from the trauma because it's not mine. I don't have to. You yeah, have to dig down and release yeah. it. Yeah, you need no teal swan. You do what the completion process is. That's the technique. Yeah. <laughs> so someone guided me through that part of that. Okay. So I've been actually doing that for weeks. This this uh, digging down to trauma and releasing it. And that's yeah. why I was stuffing myself with food because I was dealing with so much emotions and dealing sure. with the breakup and all this. And yeah. It's, yeah. It was all rolling at once. But that's I asked for it to be quick. I guess. <laughs> As I think Ray said, if you ask it, you know, transition, you manifest it. And like, we want the fast track. Like, I'm impatient. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get through this. I want to go through, go the hard way and do it fast. Yeah. Go through the trauma. Yeah. And get well, it out. Well, if you can do it, then that's great. I mean. And then get yeah. to the destination. Right.
Well, that's 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 good. Uh, I mean, if I want it, I guess. If I get what I want, I guess. <laughs> that's good. That's true, true. If I asked for it, so I guess uh, it's better to think that I did ask for it, not that I didn't ask for <laughs> it this way. True, true. It's, well, it's, it's actually interesting to see how long does a manifestation take, right? Mm-hmm. We don't know. You know, I mean, that's, that's yeah. There, there's still, um, you know, some people manifest something in all their life and it eventually maybe comes to fruition, but... Uh, and, and there's also things. Oh, you didn't manifest strongly enough. Like, what does that mean? Were you, were you really fear. Co- convinced? Exactly. You, be, you become what you fear and what you what you um, repress persists. What's the oh what's oh different word for it? Yeah, 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 yeah. What you resist persists. Correct. That's a good point. It's like I say it every day, but I keep forgetting which word. Yeah. I just I just said it yesterday. Yeah. Um, yeah. Met, met this this guy I was going to help him put some solar panels on a van and he was talking about an experience he had and saw the Akashic Records you know okay um, it's like going in the fourth dimension or whatever fourth fifth dimension right kind of stuff yep but so it, that's you know, know generation to generation to me though there's there's a point where it's like well you know people say oh Akashic Records that's just what it is I was like well no I mean, anything can be changed so just because they exist doesn't mean you're bound by them. Yeah. It's like <laughs> so, these memories in yourself. So you can remember it and exactly, and then deal with it. You know, and figure out why it was affecting you. Yeah, and then right? it, it can be released, and then released. you can move on. So, yeah. I mean, that's that's you know, in, in the Western medicine, that's that's the new um, uh, epigenetics. The whole field of epigenetics is dealing with that, and, and finally understanding that actually in our genes is memory. You know, and if we change, so it's like science and spirituality are like this. They're coming closer. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. You know, because spirituality is always going to be all known or dealt with that. Interconnected. Um, but now we can actually prove it on a medical level where it's like, yeah. yeah, you know, you can you can take your DNA and then you do release of traumas and then you take your DNA again and it's changed. Wow. Absolutely. You know, because, I mean, yeah, you know, a lot of these, like, for example, repression, like if we repress pain, if we repress trauma, then it goes somewhere because it's still there. And that's actually one of the things, I mean, you know, I've done yeah. some research, of course, on cancer and, and a lot of people that are uh, more introvert have a, generally, this is not you know, 100%, but generally people that get cancer are more introvert. So you know, people that Bottling are more extrovert, up. that's exactly it. Mm-hmm. You, know, you bottle things up, it has to go somewhere. And it's not overnight, so, because cancer doesn't necessarily pop Watch up. Watch out. <laughs> you become more, more social butterfly. Now, it's not about that. It's just being emotionally expressive that you don't bottle things up. Yeah. You know, so, uh, I told them that today. That's that's very very important. Uh, not just for your own health. So my my anger is preventing cancer from me. <laughs> I can't. Well, I don't, I don't know. well, if you if you keep it locked in, then that's not good. But yeah, I mean, a lot of people have emotions that they're not aware of, or even I let, I let stuff go, and then it's then it's gone. You you feel it in the moment, and yeah. then. Then you, you're not suppressing it. You don't have to dig it up later when it's like grows like yeah. a tumor, no, absolutely. for lack of a better phrase. No, absolutely. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So um, that's a really good way of putting it, and, and that that is actually what it is. You know, so um, like grow in the dark, like mushrooms, right? Like a fungus, pretty much. Um, and being able to, yeah, and because of what you're doing, you live more in the moment too, because you're not you're not holding on to oh. I should have reacted this way five minutes ago. Well, mm-hmm. why didn't you? You know, so but it's it's hard to do that. You know, I mean, I'm it's been a twenty year process for me to kind of go that route, and it's still not natural. <laughs> so, uh, it's like if you live in the moment, it doesn't matter when you die. It's like it's you're not worried about the future. Not as much. Yeah, I mean, like I, it doesn't I'm, mean I'm not afraid of dying in an accident like tomorrow or tonight, and when I drive home or yeah, whatever. Well, that also means you're you've sort of accepted who you are and uh, yeah. you know I mean it doesn't mean you stop planning for the future and that you don't have any any goals you know? I mean that's I think people mistake those two things as, as the guy that led our let our class process you you have the bow you have the arrow you have the bow, you have the bow you aim it yeah. and then when you let go you don't worry about where it's gonna land because it's already it's already on its trajectory you don't, like why are you gonna worry about the whole time waiting for it to land like watching it right or you plant a seed and, and checking there every hour, every day. Right, right, exactly. It's actually interesting because I uh, let it go and you come back. You know, you, you casually you'll notice you'll notice when it starts growing. You, yeah. won't, you, you won't have to go look for it. Yeah, yeah. 
It's actually interesting you mentioned. You want to, you want to dig it up and try to see if it's sprouting out of there and then ruin the whole thing. Absolutely. Because that, that's actually the thing of also about manifestation. You you start it and then you actually forget about it. You know, because then yeah. it's sort of the seed is in motion, but you're not exactly. I mean, <laughs> you think about it, you resist kind of like, what if it doesn't happen? I don't know. Right. And not only that, but it's like that, that looking like exactly that. It's like if you plant, I mean, you just said it, you know, planting a seed, an actual plant seed. If you take a look every five minutes, it's never going to grow because you keep disturbing it. But you just <laughs> let it in there. You know, who knows how long it yeah. takes, two weeks. Actually, that's one of the things I love to do. Um, I have this, somehow this pot where I put you know, um, seeds in it and it just sprouts within weeks, whatever I put in it. So I have mm. two lemon trees growing. I have an, an avocado tree. Avocado tree, how so, big is it? Oh, uh, it's about two feet now. It's so. going to take, how long did it take? Four years at least? Yeah, but that's okay. You know, it, I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's literally from, I planted it just before we left in, in August. And then a friend who came by to water our plants, she was like, after two weeks, she hmm. called and was like, I can't believe it. It already grew like this much in two weeks. It was ridiculous. Wow, yeah. yeah. So, and it's now like this tall, I mean, almost three feet. So, it, it's, mm-hmm. yeah. I know I actually have to replant it because the pot's getting too small, but I'm like, no, it's doing so well in that pot, you know, so, because the lemon trees actually stopped growing quite a bit after I replanted them, because uh, they were the same thing. They, I had two seeds in that pot, and they both... They're used to their environment, so, and they don't amount of balance. Yeah. yeah, at least they're close together, so, but they're not in the same pot, but I, because I was like, well, I want them to have enough space in there. So they're, they're slowly growing, but not at the same pace as they were previously in that pot, so that's kind of funny. Uh, could also be the location, because that pot is on top of a... A stand so it gets more uh, sun exposure. Back, so. back to manifestation. Do you do any? Do you do meditation and do you do a? I kind of sort of. I mean, kind of practices for manifestation, or do you just just. Uh, I did it while I was in Europe um, before the pain right started, and even in the beginning of the pain, I really. Uh, the other thing I, I did uh, that's actually kind of related to manifestation is a book called "I Am the Placebo," hmm. and it's a guy. Uh, the guy who wrote the book, he. Um, he started the whole movement because uh, he does, you know, he does uh, workshops uh, and this now all over the world. And he started it because he got in a bike accident. So he was he was in a bike race, and a woman um, missed the barrier with her SUV and mm-hmm. then dragged him along for fifty feet. So he had a couple broken vertebrae, and basically, the doctor says you're never going to really. You know, they said that not necessarily walk again, but you're always going to be in pain. And there was one. One, a surgery that he could have done to make him walk again, but sort of awkwardly and never really be fully himself. And he opted not to do that. So they transported him home. And then for nine months, he was laying on his stomach uh, for nine months, because that's the only thing he could do. And, uh, oh, are we getting it? Okay. All right. I'll see you later. Oh, did you need... Oh, you can get out, right? Because he's parked behind. Um, I'll take. Oh, I'll take the BMW. Oh yeah, cool. All right. Uh, and um, and so for nine months he meditated every day, uh, and it started to you know obviously started slow and then kind of went. I mean, I think he got up to eight hours a day, um, and basically he was meditating and kind of visualizing that his spinal cord was growing back together and all the all the injuries basically went back. And after nine months he got up and walked. Wow. Um, so. I mean, that's like a gestation period. That's the extreme, you know. Yeah. I mean, not not everybody can do that, um, and that's to me. The, the, so here, here's here's the balance, right? I mean, I unfortunately. But that, that's where like no doctors are coming trying to fix it for him. You know, he's not he's not getting. Yeah, he's really he's just like I'm gonna lay here and like I'm right, like, truly. Mm-hmm. But of course, you know, you got to be able to do that. You know that you you have some comfort and you're not in too much pain. To be able to do that, because I have to say, when I when the pain kicked in and mm-hmm. I, there was no way to really meditate, it just it just so consuming that all your focus is on trying to avoid having pain. Well, that's the thing you don't want to so, you need to embrace it. Oh, uh, trust me, this was not this was beyond. <laughs> I've never felt it, but yeah, you this resist, is, resist it, then you're not gonna. Uh, I mean, I no, it, it was just like one of those where you don't want to even yeah it was so uncomfortable and so <laughs> so so harsh uh that i mean i was on bike i was on bike then and i didn't know wow. you know so um yeah it was it was not fun um and even i mean 
and then I got on oxy, you know, and then changed my medication actually, oxycodone, and then that's fine. <laughs> he's, he's out. So, and oh. then, um, yeah, I'm tired too. <laughs> and then I went, I went, actually, I went, uh, what I did is I went cold turkey on my, um, on the, uh, on the pain medication. On the pain medication, because what happened was, um, I had, this was like three weeks ago, I had the worst, that was actually like the worst pain. It was like a, um, um, it was a sciatic nerve and it kicked in. I took Vicodin. It didn't help. And for like an hour and a half, I was just in agony. It was just like really, really bad. Mm. And then it finally kicked in. And I, I don't know. Sorry. I, I don't, I don't own it. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> You, Back rolling. I think, I think you're losing the change. That's what I'm losing. <laughs> okay. Let's get more comfortable. Yeah, let's get in pajamas and there you go, there you let's go. have a slumber party. <laughs> um, Talk about our the pain. Yeah. So so what was interesting is so that night was the worst, and the next day I had a healing appointment over, over the phone, and he was working on me, and I could feel just that whole my lower back just kind of relaxing while I was working on it, and he didn't tell me until afterwards. And that to hmm. me is always, it's still trippy that you can do remote healing and it works. Yeah, like I did, I did remote emotional healing, like that seems to be easier. <laughs> it does, it does. Physical healing, like. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, I've done it too. I, I have done it to others and oh. it, it works. I know it does. It's so, like re Reiki over the phone. Yeah, pretty much. But it, it's, <laughs> it's still mind baffling yeah. for me to receive it. But anyway, it worked. And then actually from that point on, um, the pain was that that pain was gone, which was part of the the biggest uh, issue. The other part was uncomfortable, but it wasn't like really hardcore. Uh, and then, um, but then I noticed that I was actually getting oversensitized. And then every time I got oversensitized, meaning that I felt achy, like having a um, a flu, I would take a pain medication because like, well, I want to because my theory was I want to stay ahead of it so it doesn't because that's the thing you don't want to mm -hmm. get it too high. And then at one point, like three or four days into it, I was like, this doesn't seem right. So what I ended up doing is, <clears throat> let me let me get through this flu-like period. Mm -hmm. And so I did. Uh, it kicked in around eight hours in, uh, and then it lasted for about an hour and a half. And then it went away. I was like, oh, that's odd. And what that was is actually uh, withdrawal syndromes, partial, partial mm -hmm. withdrawal syndromes for the, for the pain medication. And then I ended up just stopping altogether because I said, okay, I don't have pain that I can't manage right now. And then what happened was after 36 hours, I normalized where I wasn't, I didn't have this achiness. Um, it wasn't like I was feeling achy anymore. It was more like, hey, this is my normal body again. This is my, you know, Finally, right? yeah, that my, that my bones, you know, my, my bones, it aches to some extent, but not overly, you know, I was like, I know that, okay, when I get out of bed, it's like, it's kind of, it's going to be a little bit creaky, but it goes away in a second, you know, versus like, oh my God, it's going to be there for three, four minutes or maybe half an hour before. So it was really interesting, uh, but it was the best thing I could do. And ever since then, it's been a really good, uh, so that's three weeks ago. And, and since then, it's been good progress, you know, so, uh, but it, it was, it was a tough three months. It was, I have to say, this was probably one of the hardest uh, times of my life. Um, now, what I learned from it, and this was pretty immediate uh, when I first got it, was to be able to relate to people that have chronic pain. Uh, it was really interesting because I am first, I mean, my mom has had this for years with her back. And then another guy that I happened to run into, and it was an instant connection on that level, which we didn't have mm -hmm. before. So I'm grateful for that learning experience. I'm like, I don't want to have this experience ever again. So um, because it just, I mean, I've lost three months out of my life, you know, where I couldn't do much. Do you uh, consider yourself an empath? Or I'm sorry? Consider yourself an empath? Yeah, for sure. Uh, but, you know, that's the thing, also learning to be an empath without actually being sucked in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's, you know, there, there's something called a compassionate uh, detachment. Uh, so where you're, you're compassionate, but you're actually, you know, you can turn off the, the, the things that will bind you to that. Uh, person, you know, but you can still relate and you can still say, yes, I know what that feels like. I've been there. This is what helped me. Let's see what might help you. you know, so, uh, but, but really being able to understand 
what this person is going through. Because, you know, I've had experience in my life where I know other people can't relate to, and, and it's hard, you know, and they say, mm -hmm. like, well, you know, I've been depressed since I was 13 years old, and I didn't know, you know, I, I still don't know that I'm depressed because I've learned to live with it. And most people mm. don't know that. I was very depressed yeah. around that age. Uh, right around there, that's when I started, you know, when I realized, oh, I like, I want to have a connection with, you know, I'm a man, so I want a connection with a woman. Yeah. But I can't get one. <laughs> so I was depressed for like five years. Yeah. Man, it's, uh, it's hard. Our society is really tough in that way, so. Um, and, yeah. It's human connection is a, you know, it's, it's a, that's the number one need. Yeah, yeah. And it's sad that, you know, our whole system is set up to learn formal skills, right? You go to school, mm -hmm. formal skills, kindergarten, school, there's formal skills. Uh, I mean, kindergarten, I remember growing up in kindergarten, there was definitely some attempt by the teachers to, uh -huh. to hey, go share and be more social and learn some social skills. But without sitting in like a column lines of desks. <laughs> All struck. You're all facing the yeah. front. This is your teacher. You follow the directions. Right. Don't look behind. You don't pass notes. I mean, it's the you know, it's it's the it's the worst thing that can be done really to kids because you're you're unlearning the basic social behaviors that are actually going to be very important for the rest of your life. And the same is that goes for emotions. I love and stuff. No I just, just realized this. You're preventing them from learning from each other because you're telling them you need an authority figure to learn from. Just an authority figure. Don't learn. Don't mingle among yourselves and learn. From experience and talking to each yeah. other on people your level. That's how religion. That's why wow. religion. Yeah. That's why religion is so powerful because. Yeah, the hierarchy. It's you know. You can only trust uppers. There you go. No, because it's scary to think for yourself and be your own master, right? Because then all of a sudden everything you do is your own responsibility, right? Um, <laughs> versus oh now you get to blame the person who told me to do this. Uh, so, uh, but it also makes you more passive. Uh, individual, you know, to like mm -hmm. always, you know, it's like, oh, this person is responsible for my life and telling me what to do. Um, so yeah, I, I grew up thinking just life, life is, life goes a certain way, and they, they just all these rules and these guidelines have been established, and just you do this and this. Yeah. Oh, so you're, you're you're smart, so you got to go to college, and pretty much everyone's going to college. What's what major do you pick? What do you like? I like computers, so I do computers. Yeah. <laughs> And then, like, what's the point? I didn't, I didn't think for myself until, you know, I was out of college. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then I, like, if I would have started thinking for myself earlier, I would have, like, five years ahead of time right. on discovering who I am and what I want to do in life. Yeah. And I have to say that's actually interesting. Except for my experiences all made me who I am today, so I don't sure, think I'd end Sure, I know. It's, it's, it's hard to go back and say, you know, this... Say what would have, would have happened. Would have, would have, should have, could have. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting is, I mean... Germany, the the schooling system is actually very different. Where it, mm -hmm. it it trains you to be independently uh, an independent thinker and really have more of a like th that's the thing. I mean, when I see people graduate from high school in Germany, they're much more mature and adult than you know here. I think it's really as I said, people going to college or graduating college. That's where that more adult way and, and maturity actually kicks in mm -hmm. uh, because beforehand it's very structured it's very like you know you're not yeah, supposed you to hardly even get yourself. to pick what classes you want like, yeah yeah in college you get to pick your classes at least so right. you have freedom in that yeah and you know there's yeah different vibe in college obviously absolutely and usually you move away from your parents mm -hmm. also you know so i think there's a there's quite a nice break really that happens now of course you know, the, the, the structures teach you with more respect <laughs> is one of the things that's true uh, I mean, high school, you're just supposed to be subordinate. Right. Although I had a pretty good high school, I don't know. Yeah. Well, partly, partially is uh, the school system in Germany is a little different where in fourth grade, you do a lot of testing. And then with that testing, you actually get, um, you, you go to three different school systems. A, mm. uh, if, you're, if your grades are not very good, then you stay in elementary school till ninth grade. Uh, if your grades are, you know, run on the mill, you get to go to middle school till 10th grade. And only if you, your grades are good enough can you go to gymnasium, hmm. which, which then uh, to 12th grades, and only then can you go to college at all. So if, with the other two schools, you're not uh -huh. eligible to go to college. Um, but these other schools, so what's interesting about the three systems is when you, you stay in public paid college or? Yeah. Right? Because you know, there's got to be schools people can you pay to go to whatever school. There's no, there's no tuition. So For any? For any. Interesting. Yeah. All, all, uh, all schools are free. You know? I mean, you have, there are some private schools, but 
I'll call it like another school I went to. Oh, and, post-secondary is free. Yeah. Yeah, so it's quite amazing. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so, but the, but the interesting part about these other schools is like when you stay in elementary school, more of the focus is actually on on more physical skills. Like you have wood workshops, you have uh, you know metal works. So things that are more physical and and a more um, vocational training type of thing. And the thing is, most of these kids then end up going you know going to vocational training, which is a very formal system in Germany. And then becoming a car mechanic and all this, you know, becoming a hairdresser. That's a two to three year uh, formal education. You cannot become a hairdresser without that, mm. you know, or a massage therapist or what, what, what not. It's, it's two to three years, depending on the, on this, on the, uh, on what you do. Uh, but it's a real opportunity. And what it is, is it makes, I, I found it makes the people happier because they're like, Hey, I'm valued even though I'm not, I didn't go to college, right? I have this job, this is my profession, and I'm actually gonna be good at it, you know? And a lot of them go, I mean, in the area, I grew up in, you know, Mercedes-Benz hired a lot of people from that because, you know, you don't need a college degree to work in a, in a machine shop, so, mm -hmm. uh, or even running a CNC machine. Uh, so even, like, things that are not necessarily, you do all the work, but you actually know, okay, this part's supposed to look like this, and I'm gonna make the machine make that, do that, you know? So you have to have some way of understanding that. Um, and so it was, it's, I think it's a good system. I mean, I know a lot of people think it's very, very restrictive because More socialistic or... it's so early in life that, you know, and, and yes, you have the option of, you know, if let's say you blossom in sixth grade, you can switch schools, right? Uh, or the other way around, my, my, my cousin was actually eligible to go, go gymnasium, but he ended up going to middle school because all his friends went to middle school. So mm. he opted to, but then what he did is once he, once he finished middle school, then you can go to gymnasium for two years to graduate from there. So that's an option. So it's, it's more flexible than people think it is. Um, but it actually creates to me, a happier society that you got people that actually have jobs that they're really valued, you know, that they really enjoy doing versus hating. It makes you more, more stable and certain. In America, we have so many choices. It's I know uncertainty, and indecision makes people anxious. Made yeah. me anxious. Always, try, I'm trying to align the future. All these different forks in the road, trying to right. tie all the knots together, and it made me into an, a stressed, anxious person. Yeah, to some extent, choice living is living out of you know, not living in the moment. Right. Well, because even if I think about car insurance, right? Okay, there's fifty <laughs> companies that offer car insurance. Yeah. Right? Which one do you pick? That's the best for you. Yeah that's gonna really treat you the best and, and provide you the best service at the best possible price, you know? And it's like, do am I willing to do all the research? No, you know? And then that's actually one of the things I think a service would be great, like companies offering, it's like, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna look at you and provide you with what's best for you, you know, without, but then who are you gonna trust, right? Because everybody has an angle, you know? Even, that's the one thing I hate about financial advisors, they always have an angle. Because it's all, it's never about their customers. Because I'm like, if you're so good at making money, why are you still working? Yeah. To me, that's a big red flag. So if you're if you're wildly successful in your what you do, if you're going to do, yeah, why aren't you just doing the stock thing all day and not having to deal with customers? There you go. It's like, well, yeah, yeah. And, and the bullshit answer. I want to get you to make money too. Yeah, exactly. Same, so, maybe, but probably you don't not have most, a vested, most of the case now. Well, exactly. And I was like, you don't have a vested interest in making you money. Because regardless of if you make money or not, you're going to get paid. Mm -hmm. Like, if I lose my all my portfolio tomorrow, you're still going to get paid because there's a set service that I have to pay every year. You know? Yes, it's based on the actual sum that's in my portfolio. So, yes, the more is in there, the more you get. But that five hundred dollars just because my portfolio went up for fifty thousand dollars, you're not. That's not a vested interest in trying to get that. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's that's you know. So you always have to like be suspicious about or or just be conscientious about like what is the person's motivation in helping you achieve your goals. You know, is it because they make money off of that, or are they truly do they truly have your best interest at heart? You know? and, and sadly. And this is kind of sad in this country where, yeah, most people have their own interest at heart, not somebody else's. <laughs> yeah. It's like the I same. like to, I like to imagine. I have these, you know, dreams. I told you about sharing society and everything. Yeah. But 
I have to put myself first and then I need I need a stable life and certainty Absolutely. and success before Absolutely. I can help everyone else. Right. To some extent. Yeah. No, and that's and that's how, No, and, and that's but you have an altruistic goal. You know, that's that's there. And I think your heart yeah. is there. So when along the way you have an opportunity to do that without you causing your own path to be completely destructed, uh, then you will do that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like my, my previous wife, you know. She, but if I, if I want to live in a better world, then is it just my selfish desire to live in a better world? Is that altruism? Or not, <laughs> is no, it still not, altruism? It is. If it's me wanting to live in a better world? No. It's just like a hypothetical. It's a, I mean, it's a good question, yes. But I think at the core of it is, sure, it, it serves me as well. Because I see everyone as so in, interconnected. Right. You know, as well. Yeah. We're all part of the same same thing. Yeah. And we need each other. Very much so. And, and actually, that brings me to a good point about uh, ever since the, uh, the pranic conversion, it's, I'm much more sensitive to energies and to densities. And so, for example, uh, the densest place we were was actually Prague. And hmm. what was interesting is, and you wouldn't think about that because we were in Budapest. And, and uh, you know, that's actually, Hungary has a more history of, of uh, uh, of suppression and, and heaviness in terms of like emotional heaviness. Okay. But what was interesting is, and I looked at it, it was like, it had a lot to do with the food. Because in, in, in cultures that have been established for a long time, for example, we were in Tuscany and I loved it. I mean, it's like, it's such, A, the clock sticks lower. <laughs> it's, it's, a mu- it's a much more relaxed atmosphere than in most places in the world. It's almost like, Hawaii Island life, you know, where you just, I'm going to visit there, relaxed and just, For sure. just very calm and, and the food, unbelievably good, just because it's all local and it's all, and, and the thing is you go to five restaurants and the menu is somewhat similar. You don't have like 200 items on the menu. You have, and what I like too is like simplicity. Like you don't have a pizza with eight items. No, you have three pizzas with three items. So. You, you kind yeah. of keep it simple, but focused, and yeah. it really works. Now, I have to say, too, it's like, and that, and that simplicity seems to also permeate in everybody's life. For example, our friends that live there, um, one place they go to for dinner a lot, you know, the, the people built a beautiful, you know, they started small, and they keep building on, they, they now have a pool, and they, it's a hotel, they run it, you know, and then they ask, like, so where do you go on vacations? Like, why do I want to go on vacation? <laughs> this is this is the most beautiful place in the world I can think of, and we love what we do for our guests. We don't need to go anywhere to enjoy ourselves, you know. And I mean, I don't know if you've heard. There's a there's a famous story which works with many cultures. Um, you know, an American goes to Italy, or let's say to Greece, and uh, he sees a guy uh, lounging on on the beach. Uh, and uh, you know, get in a conversation. He's a fisherman. It's like, oh, you're a fisherman. So, so why you're not out there fishing? As well, you know, I did that this morning, and now I'm enjoying my my afternoon and my time. I was like, well, you should, you know, um, you should buy a you know a bigger boat and hire somebody to help you so you can get more fish. And like, <laughs> and then and then you grow your business and you get another boat and hire more people and and then. And then, you know, you build your business and then you can go and relax at the beach. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm already doing that. And then you can go and relax. Right. So, so or it's vacation. A, it's a, and that's usually like a, a Northern European attitude versus a Southern European or Southern uh, hemisphere, aside from, you know, Asia uh, attitude where it's like, yeah, you, you're, you work, you work to live. You don't live to work, right? yeah. And and that's the thing about you know if and that's your goal too, right? I mean, you're you're trying to establish yourself, but you have a goal, you know, to help others, you know, to really create a community, to create something beautiful, and that is an actual goal, you know. And I don't think you're going to lose that yeah, goal. Yeah. Work, right? work to live and live to help. Exactly. You know, okay. versus versus that, it's like, oh my God, I it, it, I mean, I hear this. You know, in this country, it's like, oh, I, I'm going to work, work, work so I can retire. And then you ask people, what does retirement mean? Oh, I can do all these things. And it's like, well, why don't you do them now? And I was like, what's holding you back? So, well, well, I can't afford it. It's like, well, maybe you need to 
change time your life, is, pal. T- yeah, time's our most valuable asset. But people, it's like, we don't get taught that here. It's like money is the most valuable asset is what yeah. is taught in this what, Yeah, what you can get once you get money first. Yeah, and I get it. You know, I'm I'm in a very lucky position of, of you right. know, having a decent amount where I don't need to worry about it. And yes, it is fun to say, hey, I like this. All right, I can actually buy it. You know, but I, I don't buy stuff I can't afford. Never have. You know, never have in my life. And uh, it feels good because it's like, yeah, I don't ever, I'm not overextended. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so many people are. And it, it just creates this stress and, and this burden. And, and then the hamster wheel. And... Exactly. You know, because you can never get, I mean, I, so, I see so many people that are, and I know this is a, what is it, 60% of all families in the U.S., um, a $400 extra expense would put them at, in bankruptcy. You know, $400. Wow. Yeah. 60% of all yeah. Americans. I mean, that's, that to me is insane. Because it's like your car, right? At any moment, it costs $400 in, in repair. Like, or, you know. So everyone has a new car is paying off a car loan instead. Yeah. Because yeah. you couldn't risk it. Oh, I had to do that. I picked, I wanted to get a used car and have it all paid off, but I couldn't risk a mechanical failure right. when I could just get make payments, be paying less, have less money up front and get a brand new car, right. get better gas mileage. Yeah. No, I mean. They, they, they make you get a new car. They, at least that's one. At least that's a good option. No, it is. Then I mean, risk, risking, um, and then you're stuck in debt right. for a long, then you have this overhanging you. Absolutely. I have a you know, five-year or whatever loan on my car overhanging me. Yeah. No. But it's, you kind of, you know, I mean, we have an electric car and to me, that's just a, okay, this is the cost, you know, $300 a month. That's the cost of, of commuting, you know, from A to B. Mm-hmm. And I see it as that. And it's like, okay, that's a continuous cost. And every two to three years, you just get a new one. Uh, and it's not like, it's not like, oh, you own mm-hmm. this car because you love this car. It's like, no, it's, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a utilitarian thing that gets me from A to B. Yeah. And it just cost me 300 a month and that's that's what I, yeah, know, I definitely it. I used to be more attached more attached to my cars oh I'm completely it's attached to my cars. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, I love it but that's why we have my six, last one yeah. I got upgraded I, I was in, a, in, a, in an accident I but I got like upgraded yeah because yeah, so, it was just before <laughs> oh yeah you came here so worried I couldn't yeah. come to Phoenix and do the filming and everything yeah, yeah. so it was amazing I mean it's you know so lucky yeah and, and some of sometimes circumstances put you in a situation where it's like oh wow this is much better right so where it you know you, you realize like hanging on to stuff sometimes doesn't pay off you know because i mean it, certain cars i mean some of my cars don't cost me barely anything you know because they're they're old they still keep ticking and you know some are already registered right now and that's okay you know will i you know is it worth selling Mm-hmm. Almost not, you know, because you don't get anything for them. Mm-hmm. But if you need one in a buy, then I can always you know, jump in it and drive it. So, <laughs> yeah. so, um, but I do want to consolidate. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I am Some minimalism. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I'm probably never going to get there. I would actually, yeah. I would love to get there. Uh, but I'm just, I love too many things. I, I, I have so many hobbies that are things. That's uh, me too. And that's okay. You know, at the same time, I'm following uh, Elliot Tommy Lamine. Who's a he's a hundred percent breatharian, you know. Uh, oh, oh, he's okay. I, I, yeah, he's I a guy from Ohio. You know, I know which one. And he's currently in, uh, I think he's in Syria or he was in Egypt. Did he have that one? Oh, he's in Egypt. Is, is he visiting with uh, a woman that was in? I see these Facebook posts that this woman was visiting him. Yeah, yeah, he's currently in Egypt and uh, he's basically teaching breatharian. He was in India for a while, so I really like him and and his his approach is a little different where he says, "Don't switch to pranic living." Uh, without it, you have to resolve your crap first before you can get there. That's so, what I feel like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for and sure. I, and I think he's on the right path that we're, and I mean, and I have to say. You, you do fasting and you, these emotions are getting dug up because they're stored in the cells, the yep. memories. Yeah. You're going to deal with it whether you want to or not. Correct. And if, you know. If somebody, you want to be, yeah, you want to get there, you have to deal with it. Exactly. So it's almost like, I mean, if you're ready to face I know I wanted to be breatharian, so. Yeah. That's why I'm dealing with it. Right. There you go. So that's good confirmation. Yeah, totally. It's just his thing is actually don't do it. Don't like Ray does the wheels before the car. Yeah. And for him it worked, you know. And and for a lot of people that 
or for, for a reasonable amount of people that go through the process with him, it works that way too. You know, I mean, there's, there's people that don't have that much baggage or they're just much better about being able to deal with it or maybe they can suppress it better. Whatever the case is, they're just able to do that and stay with it. Uh, I know I'm probably one of the few people that my cancer got worse even after the conversion, uh, which wasn't what I thought would happen and certainly not what I expected. And it was kind of... I, I, I was, a little dis- I was a little disappointed, but it wasn't it wasn't all a surprise because I mean I knew my my numbers were you know getting worse. So, but I felt great. You know, that's that's it didn't make any sense, but unfortunately, that's what you know. Cancer is sort of the silent, deadly killer because you just don't feel it coming on. You know, you're saying it's like so. a, the depression you had since thirteen. Yeah, besides. right. And, you know, I, I really didn't realize it until I did the pranic conversion. I was like, shit. You know, it's like it really kind of, hmm. because the clean, the cleansing really also kind of made me more focused and my mind was clearer. Um, and it, it really kind of made me aware. I was like, wow, I've been dealing with this brain fog for forever in my life. You know, where I can't sit down and concentrate. I can't do the things I want to do. Um, it takes me a long time to actually, you know, I have to do, a bunch of other things to clear out of the way before I can actually do things I want, I need to do. I mean, so, yeah, and we, we are very much, we, are, we relate on that. Yeah. What, what are some examples of those, like like hobbies or goals you want to? Yeah, I mean, even there, you know, things that I, that I want to do out of enjoyment. For me, it's like the documentaries, literally, like, I'm putting it off, putting it off. What am I going to do? i got to make more money. i got to feel more comfortable. i got to solve my health thing. Yeah. Like, I did it some big family issues and living situation right. as well, but... Right now and then dealing with a relationship on and off and now i'm just like motivated to actually get things get my dreams going even more of them like mm-hmm. strength society was one of them but i got plenty more yeah. Yeah. and i'll stick to whatever you know i feel good and happy doing right so well, i want to force myself you know yeah and finding that feel more ready right exactly yeah and finding that balance right of of, of being able to do the things that sustain you financially uh, that are also, you know, you have a passion for, uh, and then balancing that out with the things you really love to do that might not necessarily be money generating. You know? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I hate people that all their hobbies are money generating. It's like, ah, it's like, <laughs> it's just annoying. Right. Because it's like, okay. I mean, fine. You're, you're just lucky in that sense that whatever hobbies you have also seem to make money. Um, actually today I was like, yeah, I like to have it as a potential element of it. That's, I think that's a good, like point. my passion yeah. is learning electricity and, um, renewable energy, I guess. So I just, you know, started yeah. working with solar. Yeah. Are you in contact with Alan? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah Cause I know he, he does his business. Aloma? No, Alan from um, LA. Um, what was his last name? Oh, Haskell. Uh, yeah. Haskell. Yeah. No, not, not Alan. Um, sorry. Anyways, we can talk about it afterwards. He does yeah. solar. Yeah, well, he does like sustainability, like garden. He did like um, his business does a couple of things. One is like converting gardens to drip and very uh, low water, especially in LA, and then but also um, solar and, and water collecting. So he's he's into that hmm. sort of really kind of ni- nice, sustainable, and helping people kind of convert to a more. See the guy that was the feigning when we took yeah. him to accident. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. I think. Yeah. I'll talk to him. Yeah, yeah totally. Should. Um, it's been a while since I reached out. He wanted to do like a trip up here, and I told him to come see the redwoods and everything. Well, he was up here. Uh, that was just before I was going on my trip, and I was um, supposed to organize a uh, get together, but I just ran out of time to get it all. Yeah, we so, need so because he and he was down in, in SoCal. Something that makes it easier to coordinate. Agreed. Um, well, like, also somebody you know you need a linchpin person that kind of coordinates it. Because it, it doesn't happen by itself, uh, you know. And, but like an evite is an e- is an easy thing. Like you know, you just kind of. I'm building a platform where it could happen. Yes, you're. It's interesting way to think about it. It could happen organically. If so you all plug in, you all put in your interests. You'd be like, my let's say you want to camp in the redwoods. You yeah. check that little box there, and then this system also knows your schedule. So then all of a sudden, they send you a message one day. It's like your schedule is open here. There's an opportunity to camp in the redwoods, and um. Four out of your seven friends also have this opportunity. So you're like, oh, if we all go at the same time, like then you, then it's like, yeah, a system should be able to do that for you. Absolutely. Otherwise, I'll just say, yeah, you, you do need a leader to organize the thing, and it takes their time and effort. 
Yeah, but, but there's can, tools can, nowadays to do that are for computer can do it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And also, but you're absolutely right. And I think that's you know that's the nice thing about you know cell phones nowadays. They're actually finally starting to be real assistants, right? That they complement your yeah. life. You know that they can actually help you become yeah, not take time more, away. Yeah, because mine still take time away. <laughs> well, for the most yeah. I so mean, I got hired a secretary instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's. It's it is amazing, you know, where it's like, oh my god, this has become a burden, you know, keeping up with all the emails and follow up yes. and stuff like that. No. Uh, yeah, to me computers are always like that way and then cell phones have certainly kind of bridged that because yeah, you're always they're with you. they're with you all the time, right? So you can just like, oh, I can put reminders in here, I can actually put, you know, my calendar, I can put notes in here so that, you know, and, and thirty minutes. Oh I see, you have auto shut off, okay. No, um, that's just how they run. They only do thirty minutes. They've been for a while. Oh, well, because the, the 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 files get too big. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, I don't know why they just don't start a new thing. You know, I can automatically. That's, that's what Canon does. Yeah, no kidding. So, well, that is a Canon now. Oh, they they stop. Well, it depends if it's one or two uh, cards in it. Hmm. I think if it's two cards, you can probably then just switch to the second card. But problem is, it, can't, it has to end that file. And it has to end the file before opening a new one. Yeah, and unless it has enough internal memory. We can boot so they could, have, they could have just put more RAM or whatever the heck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. That's kind of I figure weird. most people use them for pictures and not for long videos. Well, more and more though, people use the DSLRs for, for uh, video because they're just, the quality is amazing. How far along is she building that platform? That... She just started like uh, a year and a half ago. So, and then she had an investor. She already done. <laughs> Well, no. What happened was she had an investor. She had a oh. investor out of Asia, but he, who had basically endless money, you know, open pockets. But he was more interested in building an OS uh, okay. uh, for uh, for mobile, and so they ended up separating. And so she's now back to continuing her um, her goal. So, but I can definitely get you in contact with her. Yeah. So, yeah. Because that sounds kind of a good synergy there. Um, I'm not sure how open she is to adding more more to it versus sticking. And, and she wants to make it very flexible where it's modular so other developers can actually then add functionality to the to the platform and it just kind of integrates, which is a, a high order because, you know, I've, I've dealt with technology and, and in trying to make it all kind of fit together in a really, in a way that works is incredibly hard, you know. Um, Maybe that's. I mean, I'm gonna. Oh, uh, I have to start learning programming, and then I'll. The time I've been, you know, cutting back on some of my dependencies and responsibilities, mm -hmm. and at the same, you know, not not sacrificing any income, but. So that I can learn to program and do, what I want to do. I don't see it as too hard. It's like you put everything in a database. Sure, but like, what is this? An idea? What kind of idea? Yeah. Um, blah blah blah, and then what format? Audio, image. How does it relate? Yeah. And then are there any volunteer opportunities for someone to collaborate? So you put that as a volunteer opportunity, and you put people that want to volunteer, and then they have a list of their skills, and then you can connect them to things they could do to volunteer. Sure. It's just all about connection, making connections. No, that's very true. You the computer do the work instead of you know, right. like uh, my one of my. Easy examples is you're growing a vegetable garden in your backyard and you have extra tomatoes. Are you going to go knock on all your neighbor's doors and spend your time and say, you want these tomatoes, you want these tomatoes, you're going to call them up, you're going to have a group chat, right. or are you going to have a computer system that says, look, I have extra tomatoes, and then your neighbors are in the same computer system that says, oh, I'll take extra, you know, I like, the, I like these fruits or whatever, mm -hmm. or I like to get free produce, or right. tomorrow I'm cooking an Italian, so I'll need some fresh tomatoes, right, and right. then... The system tells them, oh, your neighbor has extra tomatoes, you're going to have to go buy them. Right. No, it's true. <laughs> I agree. I think, well, the, the sad part is that's how it used to be, right? In, I mean, in small, towns, Sharing, yeah. in small towns in Europe, that's how life worked. Like even, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. It was yeah. decentralized. Now it became centralized. And right. now we have to use our tools to decentralize it again. I know. <laughs> to, but a more efficient way, I think. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's ironic, but it Hopefully allows... Hopefully it won't be without... With, with, we won't be missing the human connection element is what is the problem. That's the key. That's absolutely the key because I think that has gotten lost over the years. You know, um, it's funny because as I get older, I actually value, you know, like for example, going to a hotel and you get greeted with your name, you know, like, cause they, part of their, like in Europe, that's pretty, very highly valued where you go to a hotel and they remember you, 
Yeah. We've been there before, right? And it's like, uh, versus here, I mean, people at reception, they turn over so much that, I mean, from one week to another, they wouldn't even recognize you. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not part of their goal. That's not part of their... Yeah. Uh, but... People are moving so far. I'm moving more in bigger cities. Yeah. More hotels. And more anonymity, you know. So, so you know, just yeah. moving around more. Yeah. Which, of course, has advantages because then you can be where the opportunity is and also uh -huh. where the people you want to connect with are. But it changes... The long term, you have less deep connections. Exactly. No, yep. no. Yep. Yeah. So, because it's always it's transients among yeah. transients, you know. Yeah. And at some point, that's going to catch up because you don't. There is something, you know. That's that was the thing about you know really meeting up with my parents' friends. It's like, wow, I have a forty-five year connection with these people. You know, I know them for forty-five years. They know me for forty-five years, and yeah. there's just a familiarity and. And you can talk about stuff and you have all this history this that you don't need to, that's there, you know. But the funny thing is actually, so I met some friends not too long ago uh, through my previous wife. And I have the same connection with them, even though I only have, you know, a 10-year history with them. But part of it is because there's the same, we kind of grew up the same way. You know, it's, it's, it's I mean, Germany is more homogeneous. So even if you grew up, you know, 300 miles apart. You can still almost have the same growing up experience. And then that way you can relate, you know, like the TV shows you watch, the, the, you know, the politics you went through, the life essentially in Germany was just the same, you know, and, and those are the things you can relate to. And as, as long as you, you kind of grew up in the same, you know, exposure to things, but most people did, you know, it's like, up, you know, middle class is the predominant, culture, you know, cultural, uh, um, I would say cultural, but predominant class sort of in Germany, it's probably 80% of the whole country is middle class, you know, so, um, and therefore it's easy to relate, you know, because we all had the same kind of growing up experience and it wasn't like, you know, your parents were, you know, had a decent living, um, you got to go experience a, a lovely childhood and yeah, so it's it's really interesting. You know, so, um, well, let's let's get to. I don't know, tying up anything else. We we kind of went over your whole health thing, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So I'm you know I'm finally sure. digging myself out of this out of this kind of hole. Um, I'm so, glad it's yeah, me out too. Of the pain. Yeah, right? Me too. That was that was rough. So what was so here's an interesting thing. I did and I stopped. So part of once I got the pain, I, I kind of stopped the fasting because I just. It was hard. It was too hard. Um, and uh, also, I had to actually eat something before I take the medication because it was hard on the, on the digestive system. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I did a dry fast two, let's see, a week and a half ago, and it reset me. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. what, what reset me was A, the, um, just kind of like my whole, I felt lighter. I felt more energized uh, for one. And two, the feeling of full completely went away again, you know, because it had your body knows you've, you've had experience. You've been there and back, been there and yeah. back so many times. Your body knows, okay, we're going back here. Yeah. And knows <laughs> it was just, you got on the train, it took you there. It wasn't like a hard journey anymore. No. Right. And it was wild because it's literally only a 24 yeah. hour drive fast, but it kind of just reset me. Uh, I mean, it kind of didn't, it didn't last. I'm, you know, after about a week or a week and a half, I started feeling full again, but I still have to be like, even last night I went to dinner with a friend and, and I had a whole huge plate of pasta and I was like, that was way too much to eat. But the good thing is I didn't actually have any pains or aches, so I guess it was okay. You know? <laughs> but it's one of those things where I have to be more conscious again about what I eat. Cause yeah, I did so. when I went um, dealing with my personal stuff maybe a month ago. I would eat like a big meal and I'd be like, okay, I'm fine. I ate it like the next day maybe or two days later, I ate another big meal. Okay, I'm fine. But after a week of that, I like stuffed myself so much that gluten like impacted me, and then I like, got to throw up and like it was wow. all clogged. Wow! I took, but I took that. I took like three big gluten binges. Yeah, it's really pretty big. Maybe medium, medium <laughs> large, not as big as it used to be. I yeah. used to be bad binging when I was doing my you know transitioning earlier stages, mm -hmm. and now I just deal with more emotional. So I'm just numbing and distracting myself sure. from that. Right. Yeah. Uh, because med meditation is a hard thing for me. It's 
I'm not a great meditator either. So, um, and now you might. We have all these little things in our hands, like you said, and go do this, 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 and this before you can even get here. But what might help is uh, so for this your is, mind. This is one of the things, for example, the the I am the placebo guy. Em empty your mind out. Yeah. Uh, so have you tried guided meditation? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. I need to do more of those. Like I, I can always I forget that I do what I can do guided meditation. Yeah. That's so. That's what I started doing. Where I uh, yeah. basically put created some podcasts and stuff, or on my own, and, or audiobook, and just downloaded them on my phone. So I have them available, and that's where some of what, what I did with the uh, I am the placebo. He's got you can basically read the thing yourself and record it, but then he's got some you can purchase his voice talking, and uh, so I did that actually for a month, and that was good. You know, it was like twenty minutes a day, just you yeah. know allowing. And, and what I would do is like I would actually go on a walk uh, while I was hiking. I would listen to the the his guided meditation. You know, so versus just laying in bed because uh, that was actually hard for me to do for the last three months. I couldn't actually lay in bed long enough to be not to be comfortable, right? So I had to find some activity that I could sustain, and while I was doing that meditation. So what did you do while you're meditating again? Walking, just yeah, 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 just walking. Hmm. So so yeah, just fine. Or like even if you're driving a car, right? I mean, some of the things you have to watch out because they're gonna. Kind of put you a little bit in a sleepy mode. When you close your eyes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's not. That's a good something thing. I had. I'd fall asleep too. That's Just like reading a book, right? And that's why Sit down um, and fall asleep. I've done it hiking, where I don't have to think of much, uh, and I can still kind of concentrate mostly on a meditation. And then when it really, when it's getting more intense, I can go sit down somewhere or lay down, yeah. and okay. uh, you know, on a, on a tree stump or somewhere, uh, and kind of. That would be nice out of nature meditating. Like, yeah, it's really in good. the redwoods. I told someone, and they're like, "Yeah, do that." Right, and it's and especially if you have the audio. Except now it's rainy season, so I have an excuse not to go. Now now's even better. You put a poncho on, and okay, and you're just in your own little world. Okay. So you know, I mean, especially when you're under redwoods, yeah. you're not going to get wet because oh yeah, you're right. The canopy is taking it. It'll be cold. Well, just bring well, a blanket. Have, yeah, bring it. Well, or just bundle up. You know, so yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's good clothing nowadays that you can really, like, you know, good shoes and, and, and bring, you know, a thermos of hot tea. So, there's things you can do, so. And it's not going to rain every day anyway, so. Actually, Any other final thoughts? Like, let's, let's get this. Uh, that was a I lot. mean, I'm, I'm very glad I did this process. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. And I, I want yeah. to, I felt. Let me get a close-up. Yeah, sure. Get this. Okay. All right. Oh, should I go back under the lake one more? Yeah, we got these guys. <laughs> no, we're thinking. <laughs> nah, it's okay. Might as well. Well, it's a little lighter outside too right now, so that yeah. probably helps. Uh, actually, right. before you go ahead and pause. All right. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm very glad I did this process. Um, certainly hoped to have more health uh, benefits from it, and I think I'll. You know, whatever my journey is, I had to go through this um, last couple of months. And but the nice thing is having that uh, to me, it's being able to wake up in the mornings and knowing it's like, well, I can eat, but I don't have to. You know, it's like it's a it's a it's a freedom that I didn't have before. And and also, I do want to become a hundred percent vegetarian at some point. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that because it's it's a I don't know. I think. Yes, it's a physical experience, but it's also a very spiritual experience. You know, uh, I think for me, it's more physical than spiritual because I think the spiritual part I've already kind of gone there before even the the, uh, the uh, pranic uh, initiation. But having the physical component to go with it uh, certainly helps, and it's it's very synergetic, and and also being connected to community. Uh, so I. I mean, that is a little hard, and, and that's one of the things I, I talked to your friend about earlier, where he had, when he, he said he had a problem when he fasts, and then his friends weren't very, um, they gave him a hard time, you know, and, and I'm lucky where I have very accepting friends, apparently, and, and even in Europe, they were all, like, even in restaurants, anywhere I go, I was like, yeah, I'm fasting today, and they're all like, cool, you know, nobody, like, says, oh, Really, question like, it. You can't be here in the restaurant and not eat, you know, or drink. I was like, no. People are just like, okay, that's you. You made a choice today uh, about not eating, and 
we accept that. You know, we're okay with that. Uh, now, of course, you know, I'll tell them, like, I am on birth day, and I'm, I don't ever eat. So, you know, that's okay. I mean, you don't have to do that. But um, is there a coolness factor about it? Yes. You know, so it's like, wow, I can actually sustain myself without ever eating a solid food again, you know, or drink. I think the drinking part I don't have down quite yet, so that's I'm still mm. working on that. But the food part I have, I mean, that that's easy. You know, that, that's yeah, I fun. kept trying to do a li- uh, liquid diet. Yeah. And like my discipline comes back, but I was able to do it. Like go back to it, do it for five days, and then take a break. Yeah. Do it for three or four days, and like I'm okay with the liquid diet. I just um, I just guilt trip myself for not reading reaching that you know X number of days goal. So yeah. I, look, I look back and like I did pretty good. Like I'm good at doing yeah. this. Yeah. I'm I'm over the long term I'm getting, you know, more breath Good. Good. <laughs> yeah. And and it's and, and again it's like there's no and that's what I like about Ray's process is like he's not like, Oh my god, you failed. Yeah. You know, it's like everybody has their own timeline, you know, and and um, we all have our emotional roller coasters that you know, yeah, when you're going through a tough time, it's okay to eat. You know, it's, it's, uh, it makes you feel good in that moment. And, and, you know, something, maybe if you are more conscientious about what you eat, I mean, for me, it's like, actually, the funny thing is, um, uh, when I started chemo again, I lost five pounds in like a week. So I was like, I'm kind of want to gain this back because, you know, if I lose five pounds every time I do chemo, that's not a good thing and I can't get back. So I was starting to do like, I was actually, I ate brisket for all, from all, of all things. And mm-hmm. It's like, I feel like brisket. And it actually was good. And I was like, I, I liked it. It actually, you know, was, was okay. And I had it for three days in a row and I was like, okay, I'm done. You know, and I had milkshakes because I know milkshakes are extremely high in calorie. It kind of yeah. didn't really help. I mean, I gained a pound, you know, after eating all of that in a week. So, um, it's like, what does your body need? Your body, I don't know. I don't know either. Your body needs energetically to be. In the right mode absolutely and absolutely. if you want to build you right. know if you want to create you have to be in the right um you have to want to create you have to be passionate about creating i don't know yeah and and that and then also i noticed because of the pain i was definitely um limiting myself physically you know and and your your muscles start atrophying you mm-hmm. know when you just don't mm-hmm. so so I'm, I'm building that up and going to physical therapy so so all those things are helping and it's it's really fun to feel that motion again you know that, that energy flowing in the body and and it it's amazing how you know it lights up my spirit and, and yeah I, I can see this is like okay it's it's coming now i have to say i did um i connected with another healer uh and we're going it's a very very we're going very deep on the very very cellular level on this uh where there's pathogens that we've identified and we're working on those and and ever since I've been working with it for the last five weeks, I think, I've definitely seen, like, every week I see an improvement. You know, it's like, it's, it's almost like a very steady, it might not be a very, like this, but it's a very steady forward progress, right. uh, which has been quite amazing. So I'm, I feel like I finally found, or yet, that missing link That's or another working. component that actually helps me, you know, and I feel like I'm getting a, not just the cleansing, but like an like an overhaul, like you're, you're taking a car and getting it completely stripped down and then rebuilt from ground up mm. uh, with with upgraded and new parts. And uh, yeah, it feels really good. It's you, you, you're ready for all the all the dry passing. That's what you're digging down deeper into deeper into the cells, getting out bad stuff. And yeah, so I'm looking forward to you know once the chemo, I'm uh, I have two more uh, treatments and I'm going to take a break. And then during that time, I'm going to uh, start doing more dry fasts again because right now I don't feel like, I mean, <laughs> the last time I did a dry fast, it was the day before chemo and I actually rolled it into the chemo day. And I can't do that because um, what, what I need to do is like I can do it the day before, but then the morning of, I got to start hydrating like crazy so that that I can flush out the chemo right away. Because with dry fast, mm-hmm. you don't have a way to really flush things out. When what you, do you need from the chemo? Well, right now it's still reducing uh, to reduce the tumors. Um, that seems to work for me. So, I mean, it worked last year when I did it, and uh, it seems to be. I'm always a contrarian. Oh, I'm. I, Your I body's hate... trying to concentrate all the bad cells in one spot, isn't it? 
What it's saying. Yeah, but it's it's more than that because it's creating bad cells. And it's it's you know you gotta if if all of a sudden your body gets in a state where more bad cells get created than good cells, mm -hmm. then you're you're in a bad state. You know, so and chemo allows me to kind of reduce those bad cells. You know, kind of like it's almost like a and I personally hate chemo. I, I really did it for my family so that they feel more comfortable. So my family. Um, right now. I'm doing it sort of partially because I know it's actually working uh, and I can I can manage the side effects. But I said going into this, I'm going to do four and then I'm going to take a break. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and that's kind of a good sort of, okay, I can I can live with that. I can, four is not, you know, it's, it's a finite amount. Um, and I can feel whatever inflammation there was, whatever growth there is, it's, it's been reduced because I'm just, it's not... You know, I, I can move better. I can feel better. So something, it's not pressing on my nerves and stuff. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to the scan to see if that actually is the case. Um, yeah, and then go from there, you know, and definitely find the things that I can get to this letting go of everything and, and yeah. becoming <laughs> becoming the person I wanted to be. I just wanted to see yourself in a year. Wow, that's Anymore. a very good question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Definitely, definitely. Don't think about it. It should come, it should come to you. No, no. I mean, it, it's, <laughs> I know it's funny because I, I thought about that. Don't be much. afraid about it. Too. No, no, I'm not. I mean, it's, it's just, there's so much that I want to do. It's, it's trying to focus on the things that make sense. What's, yeah. Whatever's doable. Whatever whatever's doable. Whatever yeah. I mean, is. I definitely want to get back into the healing. So to, uh, to heal, you know, be, be back on track to be, uh, be a healer. Because I kind of uh, put that on hold for the last you know, six months. Um, and then, uh, yeah, be of service more. I think that's one of the key things that um, be of service to others more. That's that's a real goal of mine, uh, which is hard for me, actually. After you help yourself. Yeah, but there, there's an interesting thing about if you start helping others, you actually start helping yourself in the process. You know, so there's a, it's a very interesting synergistic mm -hmm. um, piece. But you're right, you have to like... Um, sort of yeah, balance it out. Therapy. Yeah. yeah, you know, and then, you know, I mean, um, and then getting much, getting back into my hobbies again, I want to, um, which I'm already doing right now. You know, I like uh, reading control helicopters and cars and boats and, and it's just, uh, yeah, just, just having fun there, just being a kid again. Um, also going on track with my car. So, and then... Mm traveling that sounds fun i mean i want to go back yeah it is it's it's intense it's, <laughs> it's intense and expensive and it's but it's a lot of fun, so. uh, I, I had to, we should go there one day i had to yeah and there's a there's a track up in uh um we should film that. well thunderhill which is in uh uh god what's the town it's off of five um what's one of the not reading what's before reading uh chico no it's past sacramento chico it's Yuba north, city not quite Yuba City. There's a smaller town. Anyways, uh, I forgot. So the, the racetrack's called Thunderhill. So um, mm. it's about an hour and a half north of Sacramento. Hmm. I think I might have a casino there, Thunderhill. I don't know. No, that's Thunder no Valley. Valley. Yeah, there, there's there's really. I mean, there's just one small town, and that's it. So. All right, I gotta. We gotta get going to our okay. next destination. Yeah, no worries. So no, it's so it's been a great journey, and I'm <laughs> really really excited and and. I'm very excited about this upcoming. Yeah, I'll see you. So. I'll see you again soon. Absolutely. I'm always traveling down. Or